Hello friends and fans, this is Thomas Doyle 3000 here, and yes, it's another model train video. However, this time it's not going to be a running session video. This is simply just unboxing and reviewing the engines and rolling stock in this video. There's a good reason for that. Actually, several good reasons, and I might as well say those said reasons right now. Okay, well, first off, ever since getting back from the Brampton train show in October, I already had a lot of locomotives and rolling stock to review. And while I have gone through the Bachman Monopoly set, the Webb Coal Tank, and the N7, I have yet to cover all those engines that were at the train show. Then there are the two locomotives from George's trains that I acquired, that being the large scale Thomas and the engine that's in this box. Yeah, I haven't really shown them off. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and add on top of that, just two months later, I placed an order from Hornby for two locomotives and one coach. The coach you have already seen in the Model Railway Imports Tribute and Farewell video. Yeah, so there's a lot to really look at. And plus, too, if you guys remember seeing it in my last video, there is another train set yet to be reviewed. I don't know if I'll get to that at some point at the rate I was going. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do the reviews and unboxings in this video, and then I'll show you the engines running another day. The other reason I'm doing this video is because after five years, I've decided it's high time for a little bit of an upgrade. The upgrade being that I'm going to take down my current layout and build an even bigger HO scale slash double O scale layout. I don't know why I just did quotes for a slash, but <laughs> oh well. But yeah, it's going to be a pretty big layout. It's pretty much going to go along the length of the original layout and then go farther than that. <laughs> I know my living quarters is a little small and confined, confined. <laughs> but you know what? I figured out a way to make it work. And guaranteed the new layout will allow me to get locomotives that normally can't run on my current layout. That being the likes of, let's say, Northerns, 2104s, Articulates like the Challenger, or even, if I am super lucky, a big boy. <laughs> yes, the new layout will allow me to run all those engines. But in order for that to happen, first the old layout has to come down. And when that comes down, the museum, that being the Equestria Girls collection up there, plus the Thomas Museum over there, will be taken down briefly, then reorganized so that way it will fit into a nice little living area. It's not coming down forever, I can guarantee that. It's just coming down for now. Well, it will once I start process on the layout. Um, yeah. So I'm just checking up on something here. <laughs> oh boy. See how professional I am? <laughs> but yeah, when, when it's all done, you guys are going to love it, and I'm going to love it. It will be a big change, but um, I think it's going to be well worth it. <laughs> oh yeah. Those are the reasons that this video is going up today. To basically just show you the locomotives and rolling stock that I have gotten. As well as, well, just having a nice look at them before we get into the running sessions. And before you guys ask, yes, there will be one final running session on the old layout before it's taken down. Sort of a nighttime tribute farewell video to that layout. After that, then it comes down. Okay? 
actually it will come down once I get enough track, ground covering, trees, and maybe some buildings. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now that I've finally said all that, let's get into our locomotives and rolling stock, shall we? I'm not going to cover anything that I have shown before, like say, um, the Royal Scot, the Flying Scotsman. Actually, I probably will show the Flying Scotsman because I never did a proper unboxing video for that one. But the likes of the Web Coal Tank, the N7, um, that's not going to happen because I had already done that before. Yeah. So, sorry guys if you're expecting to see those particular locomotives in this video. But, don't worry, there's quite a few interesting surprises in this video. And we're going to start off with this one from the Bachman Spectrum line. The Master Railroader series from Bachman. And if we look here, it says item number 82302 H.O. Baldwin 460 Steam Locomotives, Maryland and Pennsylvania Low Boiler. How oh, interesting. And it's priced at $199.98. But I think with my George's Train Spikes Rewards points, I was actually able to get it for a little bit less. Along with a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyway, there's nothing really to look at with the box. So, let's get it open and finally have a look at the 460. I don't think I've shown you guys the locomotive yet. It's been a while since I've checked out that video. Yeah, every now and then I do check out some of my videos. Anyway, the locomotive is protected with this nice piece of foam. And now if we move the foam out of the way... Ta-da! There she is. Number 27. And she is beautiful. She was connected with her tender at George's Trains, but <laughs> when I was getting the locomotive, the poor guy had one heck of a time just disconnecting the tender from the locomotive. Hence the reason I never run the locomotive is for the fact that disconnecting the locomotive from the tender is a huge hassle. And that once I actually do the review video, then they're going to stay connected. Okay? They're going to stay connected. So, yeah. That's why I've never really shown it off, except in that locomotive collection video. But hey, you're getting to see it now, and you're going to see it connected. And she will be featured in that running session video. Anyway, we take this out of the way. We get an even better view of the locomotive with tender. And now let's get the tender out first. Maryland and Pennsylvania. And see, those are the wires I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. And now, here comes number 27. Being very careful with the locomotive here. And here she is. The little 460 steam engine. We'll have a good look at the locomotive in a minute. So first, let's see if there's anything else in the box. Oh, nothing else. Oh well, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's perfectly fine. And for interest sake, I'm actually going to hook up the locomotive. So I'm going to put the camera down and see if I can do just that on camera. Okay, that's one. And two. And now we'll couple the locomotive up to the tender. And there's... Oh, okay. Hang on a second, folks.
And there she is. Maryland and Pennsylvania number 27. What a gorgeous little engine. Hence why I bought her in the first place. And she is still currently available from Bachman in case you're interested in getting her. You can find her along with the other Baldwin 460 steam engines. Anyway, let's have a good look at the front of the locomotive here. It's got a nice headlamp right there, which is always a good sign. Very tall funnel here. The smoke box door with plenty of details around the door. And number 27. And I really don't know if you can read the info that's around the number, but if you can, that's great. But from my angle right now, I really can't see it. Hm. Oh well. She's got a front coupler, which is a good sign because number 4432 and 1935 do not come with front couplers. Though I have managed to make them double head once. <laughs> No, not some struggling, I can tell you that much. But at least with this engine, yeah, you could do double headers if you wish. And this engine, by the way, is a DC engine. So, yeah, you can run it without a DCC decoder, though you can fit one in here if you wish. Actually, before we move on, as you can tell, the locomotive does not come with a cow catcher at the front. However, it does have this little step down here which can allow a crew member to ride on with separately fitted handrails right there then we move on to the side and there's a whole lot of details on here you got the cylinders along here the very nice wheels and there are the traction rods which are made of metal always a good sign and I should probably point out too that the boiler here as well as the domes, yeah, the domes are made out of metal. Look at that bell. Seriously, if you look to 4432 and 1935, their so-called bells, <laughs> well, I honestly don't know what to call them. I mean, they're nice beginner's models, don't get me wrong, but... Nah. You really notice the difference with this bell as well as their bells <laughs> but yeah the bell looks really nice and I think I can't tell if it's metal or not but mm, looks nice to me a little compressor there plenty of pipe work along the side of the locomotive and separately fented handrails always good and there's this little pipe here that goes all the way down to the cylinders and I believe that's a builder's plate right there on the side of the smoke box. As you can see, number 27 is printed on the side here of the lamp, as well as the side of the dome here, and on the side of the cab. And honestly, doesn't that look nice? I personally think it does. <laughs> There's plenty of nice details underneath the locomotive too. Yeah, really nice. And I think I might have disconnected the locomotive from the tender, and I did. <laughs> oh, well, I'll fix that up before, well, later on. Because <laughs> I will run it after doing this segment of the video. As you can tell, too, um, the windows can actually open and close easily. Um, they did before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> As you can tell, too, on the side here, there's more separately fitted handrails and nice riveting along that part of the cab. And there's an open vent right there, though it can't be opened or closed. At least I don't think. Oh, well, still looks nice. Still looks nice. Now we move on to the tender and we see Maryland and Pennsylvania. Printed on nicely on the side. And included with more nice painted details. Well, actually just more nice details at the bottom of the locomotive's tender. Including with plenty of rivets on the side. And we look to the top. That's the coal load. Very small for a little locomotive. But, you know, it still looks good. And I should point out too that the tender is primarily plastic. 
but that's all right. Number 27 is back here on the back end of the tender, as well as a separately fit-in ladder, and of course, a nice coupler back here. So that way you can couple up to any train it's given. Actually, I'll show you the cab here real quick. You got nice glazed windows on the back end too, with red bordering on this all around them, so that's good. Um, it doesn't look like the cab is painted. Um, I'm gonna take a good look at it in the light. No, no, it's not painted. But you know what, for the price tag, it's not too bad. So, yeah, I can't really fault the locomotive on this one. As you can see over here, we got a few more details than we did on the other side, besides the safety valves up here. We also have the locomotive's whistle right here. Is that firmly in place? Yeah, it's firmly in place, so that's a good sign. As you can tell too, the engine comes with a crew on the inside. It's really good. Really, really good. And now we'll have a good top view of the locomotive. Yeah. And a view at the bottom. All right, now let's see if I can recouple it to the tender. Uh, being very careful with this thing. Okay, yep. I gotta reconnect it. And as you can tell too, there's this little um, piece here. I honestly don't know what it's called, but it, it allows the fireman to basically uh, have easier access to the tender. So that way he's not making the uh, quote-unquote leap of faith from the cab to the tender. Yeah, because <laughs> that would be extremely dangerous. But it's really nice that Bachman added that nice little feature to the locomotive. And there we have it. Bachman Spectrum's number 27 from the Maryland and Pennsylvania. A really nice locomotive, and I think I did spot it when I was at George's Trains in August, but I didn't acquire it then. But, you know, when I saw it in October, I thought, okay, I might as well get the locomotive now. And I'm sure glad I did. And I will run it on the layout after I've done this segment of the video. But, for you guys, it's time to move on to the next engine. So, let's go get that next engine. And we are back with the next locomotive for this video which is actually going to be part of a video series, I just realized. <laughs> yeah, with all of my yik-yak, <laughs> these videos have a tendency to be really long and take forever to upload, so probably just a couple of locomotives rolling stock in this video, I don't know. We'll see what happens after this next engine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, our next locomotive is one of the new Hornby Terriers. This is a Kent and East Sussex Railway Terrier. There's the name right there. Uh, I can never pronounce it. But I know the engine was numbered 5 on the Kent and East Sussex. It doesn't exist anymore, but its parts went to number 3, as far as I know. <laughs> anyway, the blue Kent and East Sussex Railway Terrier came directly from Hornby. You see... At the beginning of December, I had ordered the Terrier along with one more engine plus the Great Western Coach you guys saw in the Model Railway Tribute video. Well, Model Railway Imports Tribute video. Yeah. Uh, not to get it mixed up with something else. <laughs> yeah. So I ordered those three items, but they didn't arrive until December 31st. So just one day before the new year began. A little lesson, don't order model trains in early December unless you don't mind waiting over several weeks to get your engines. I don't know if I'll order direct from Hornby again. Maybe I will. I don't know. Only time will truly tell. But you know what? The waiting period was worth it because the engines and the coach are amazing. Speaking of which, how about I actually show you the locomotive? after showing off the box. This is pretty much a standard Hornby design box, which looks really nice. 
It has a nice picture of the Terrier there. On the top of the box, we got a top view of the blue Cantonese Sussex Railway Terrier. And if we look here to this side of the box, it shows that this is a DCC ready engine. And by the way, there is a DCC fitted version of this very Terrier, in case you're wondering. But I went for the DCC ready version because at the time, I didn't have a DCC controller. There's also the product code R3781, Cantonese Sussex Railway, A1 slash A1X class Terrier. Now we look to this side, nothing really to look at. Then we look to the back of the box. It shows that the Terriers were known as OPs by British Railway Standards. And there's some info on here in case you want to read it. I don't know if you can. If you could read it, well, that's good. Um, yeah, I know the writing is very, very small. <laughs> but yeah, the box looks very nice. Really nice. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at that Terrier. And there it is in the block of ice. Now, I'll tell you this, that when I got my first look at the Terrier, there was one issue. That little buffer was actually at the bottom of the package. It had fallen off in transit. But, as you can see, the buffer is on the locomotive now. I put it back into place. No glue or anything. It just fit into place. Hmm. But just goes to show you how fragile these things are. Anyway, let's get the block of ice out of the box, if I can. Come on, you. All right. There's the block of ice with the engine in it. And we have some paperwork inside the box. Basically instructions for the locomotive, showing the A1 and the A1X as they are referred to. And how to lubricate the locomotive, accessories, and how to fit in a DCC ready and sound decoder. It's really good, really good. Keep that in the box, just in case. Not that I'll ever put a DCC decoder in my engine. <laughs> uh, I like DCC and all, but you know what? I don't mind the engine being as it is. Yeah. And there I go, rambling about nonsense again. All right, so the sleeve is now off. And as we can see, we have a detail bag, which doesn't have very much in it. I have no idea what those pieces are. If you guys do know, please let me know. And now, let's get the engine out. Protected by this little piece of plastic. I think it's plastic. Whatever it is, keeps the locomotive nice and safe. I'll just move this out of the way and deal with it later. I'm going to bring over one of my Bachman Easy Tracks to help out with this segment of the video and gently place the loco there and there we have it ladies and gentlemen the Cantonese Sussex Railway Terrier number five let's have a good look at the locomotive like many of the terriers before it and based on the real life counterparts this locomotive does have a very tall funnel which looks really, really nice. And there's the smoke box door right there. I honestly don't know what those little brass pieces are, but uh, no, I'm sure one day I'll find out. There's the brake pipe right there, the coupling hook, and of course the small hook and loop coupler. Looks very nice. And then of course the buffers, including that elusive buffer that was basically rattling around in the package when I finally opened it up. Yeah. And by the way, it is a very nice runner. I've had it on my layout a few times, and I've only had to clean the wheels once. <laughs> anyway, from the side here, you can see separately fitted handrails along the side here, and separately fitted pipes up there. And I think that might be a metal whistle. 
I'm not 100% sure. There's this little bar down here. I guess that's to help the crew to step on or stand on. I have no idea. <laughs> nah, I'm a little bit ignorant when it comes to uh, basically what's on a British steam locomotive. <laughs> but I definitely know that's a wheel arch right there. And there's the tanks with the Cantonese Sussex Railway logo painted on the side along with the engine's name. As you can tell too, the locomotive has some very nice riveting along the side, plus very nicely painted red stripes. Looks really nice. If we look to the boiler here, there's definitely some more painted stripes on there. And, well, we'll get to the top part in a bit. It's got this nice red lining along the running board, and the running board, by the way, is made out of metal, which is a very good sign, I think. Yeah, it's cold to the touch, so it's metal. <laughs> There's another wheel arch right there for the back wheels. And a very nice open cab. And if we actually look inside the cab, it's fully painted. That looks really, really nice. Now underneath, we got a nice set of steps right there. As well as even more detailing underneath the locomotive. Which makes it look really nice. There's some grilling effect on the back windows, which looks really good. And the coal bunker back there. Again, we'll have a good look at the top view in a bit. Um, I'm guessing that's to hold the tools for uh, the crew. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Still looks good, though. Oop, I'm moving the camera rather than the piece of track. Now we look to the side here, the other side see pretty much the same amount of details as last time but as you can tell too one thing i did forget to mention is the separately fitted handrails leading up into the cab of the locomotive looks really nice really really nice and now for the top view as you can tell there's some nice riveting at the top of the cab and some more rivets at the top of the boiler here. Looks really nice. And the running board, by the way, is metal. Now that I'm holding it, it's better. The underside of the Terrier looks really nice. I'm trying to be very careful with my engine here. I really don't want to knock off that buffer again. <laughs> not that I've knocked it off since I put it back on. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Hornby New Tooled Terrier from the Cantonese Sussex Railway. It is a very nice little engine and I'm very happy to have it in my collection. Now what's next? Hmm. Let's find out together. The next and final model of this part of the video is from my stash from the Brampton Train Show. Oh, that really didn't sound very good, but you know what? I'm just going to keep it in there. <laughs> Bloopers for days. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is from the series of locomotives I got at the Brampton Train Show. This is, in fact, a Lord Nelson engine. Better known as Lord St. Vincent from the Bachman Branch Line range. And I would say this is probably an early 2000s loco. I'm only taking wild guesses here because, honestly, I have no idea. I haven't really looked up any information on this particular locomotive. <laughs> yeah. There's my ignorance showing again. <laughs> One thing I do know is the fact that this locomotive was once sold by Model Railway Imports. Hence why the locomotive was featured in my Model Railway Imports tribute and farewell video. <laughs> yeah. And truth be told, I think in the past I have seen this locomotive at their stand, but I never did get it back then. So, how did I acquire this locomotive, you might be asking? Well, this is the story I've really been wanting to tell you guys, so here we go. It was getting to the point where I was starting to get a little tired. Yes, I've been there for a few hours of the train show, and I figured, okay, maybe I'll search for one more locomotive before heading back to the hotel for a good night's rest. But the problem was, I had just under $200, so the more expensive locomotives, like the Rapido Trains Royal Hudson, 
was simply out of the question. So I started looking around. My choices were between a pannier and another A4. Now, on the one hand, a pannier is a good engine, and as you guys know, I recently got a pannier for my birthday. <laughs> but then there's the A4, which is the fastest steam locomotives in the world. But after a while, I began to think to myself, hold on, I already got an A4 that day. Why buy two? Granted, I have two now, but, uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's just a matter of getting them at separate times, you know? You don't want your entire trip to be focused on just one specific class of locomotive. So, it came down to just the pannier, and I figured, okay, I'll just have one more walk around, then, then go back and get the pannier. But then, I come up to this stall at the very back of the train show, where they were showing plenty of Bachmann branch line engines. But here's the catch. The engines in question were just body shells. There were no motors, there were no wheels. They were just body shells with the boxes. All the ones that were open were just body shells. I was just about ready to walk past that booth when I noticed this engine box sealed, and with the price tag showing of just $60. The guy asked me if I wanted to see the engine. I said yes, so he opened the box, and there it was. Lord St. Vincent, completely intact, with wheels, the motor, and the body shell, plus tender. So, seeing that locomotive in such great shape, and basically at a price of just $60 right there, I thought to myself, okay, get the pannier another time. I'm going after this guy. <laughs> and that's just what I did. True story. True story. <laughs> and honestly, I'm glad I told you guys this story. <laughs> I've been wanting to tell you this for a while now. And now you know. And now the story's been told. How about we have a good look at the locomotive and its box. As you can see here, we have a very nice picture of a Lord Nelson steam locomotive and ignore the sounds from above. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. <laughs> yeah. But even in its BR livery, the Lord Nelsons certainly are beautiful engines. On this side of the box, we have the Bachman Branch Lines logo. Detail that counts. And it's the same style box for my N Class and the Royal Scott engine. And of course, there's the Model Rail Import sticker. Bit of an old one. <laughs> now we look to the side of the box here. We see that the product code is 31 407 Lord Nelson 856. That's the running number of the engine. Lord St. Vincent Southern Green. So it's not in BR. Just to clarify. And then there's all this at the back. Nothing too special to look at. On this end of the box, it shows Bachman Industries Europe Limited. And then there's just that red lining. The box is pretty much like the Royal Scots box, except for how you open it. Pretty much like the N Class. Although, as you will see, this engine is very different from the N Class. And there it is, Lord St. Vincent. Actually, before we have a look at the locomotive, here's the stuff that was inside the box. Again, we got that very nice picture of the Lord St. Vincent engine. I think that's Lord St. Vincent. Not 100% sure. On the back here, you get some nice detailed history of the locomotive. I don't know if you guys can read it. Hopefully you'll be able to. <laughs> then you got basically a guarantee here. And you also get basically an exploded parts diagram. Really nice. Really nice. <laughs> Let's see. Is there a date on here? Hmm. Nope, I'm not seeing a date. Oh, well. 
If I find it before I post this video, I'll add it in the description. But as for right now, let's get Lord St. Vincent out of the styrofoam. Now, I will admit, Lord St. Vincent is firmly held in there. Same with the tender. So you really have to lift up the styrofoam a bit just to be able to get your locomotive out. And without damaging this gem of an engine. I hope I don't damage it on camera. Oh, man. Okay. There's Lord St. Vincent right there. Now the tender. It is firmly stuck in there. You really have to pull up just to get the tender out. Yeah, it may have looked easy, but that's because I've had a bit of experience opening up this particular box. Yeah. All right, so I got another piece of Bachman Easy Track and the four axle tender on it. And then, of course, the gem itself. If she'll fit on there, will she fit on there? Oh, I hope so. Don't tell me I have to get another piece of track for her. Uh, just barely manages to fit on that thing. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. All right, well, she is a very long engine, don't get me wrong. But she's still lovely nonetheless. So now let's have a look at her details. I will point out that this is not an open chimney. Yes, there's a little bit of space in there, but it's not going all the way down into the boiler like it would with the Terrier back there or number 27. Now... You'll see what I mean in a minute when I show you the top view of the locomotive. But as you can see, it's got a nice smoke box door. I think those are separately fitted parts. Yeah, they are. That's very good. Nice little running board here and the buffers along with the buffer beam, which does have the number of 856. But as you will notice, no sprung buffers. So that's a major difference from my N-Class tender engine that I got in August of last year. Major difference. And as you will notice too, the locomotive doesn't have a front coupler. Bachman Locos normally come with the front couplers. But I guess this one had lost its coupler a long time ago. This is a second-hand locomotive, by the way. Not that I mind. It's a good runner. As you can tell, the wheels are nice and shiny. <laughs> so shiny. <laughs> uh, but seriously, though, the rims are very thick on the pilot wheels. However, it does look very nice on the driving wheels. And there's, of course, the valve gear and all that stuff. The cylinders. And the separately fitted smoke deflectors. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the handrails are separately fitted parts, which are very good. This long hose going all the way down, or pipe, I guess it's a pipe. <laughs> and then there's the wheel arches for the locomotive. And there's the big firebox for the Lord Nelson engine. And there's the engine's nameplate, Lord St. Vincent. Looks really nice. <laughs> it is a bright green though, I will admit. I've seen pictures of other Lord Nelson engines, and I think theirs is a little darker. But still, I like this engine. <laughs> Mainly because I got it at such a good price, and it's a good runner. Unlike a certain other Pacific I can talk about. <laughs> More on that one later. As you can tell, too, there's some nice riveting along the side here of the locomotive on the running board. And... Definitely more piping along down here, which is always a good sign to look at. If you look to the cab, the engine does have glazed windows on the side. And does it have them at the front? It's kind of hard to tell in this light. Oh, yes. Yes, they do have glazed windows. The Terrier also has glazed windows, too. So that's a really good sign. <laughs> Even in the early 2000s, this engine looks really good. Now we... Well, we'll get back to the cab in a minute. Because you get a better view on the other side. Looking to the tender here, you see the Southern Railway logo right there, or just name, <laughs> it's not a logo. And we can see some more separately fitted handrails on the locomotive, and some nice details along the pilots of the tender. 
looks really nice and then there's stamps to basically get into the cab of the locomotive and of course even for an early 2000s loco this engine has some nice lining all around it and of course more rivets now looking to the back again well actually for the first time really <laughs> I've never shown this off before <laughs> you can see some nice steps leading up to the top of the tender some brake pipes more buffers but of course they are not sprung as I will demonstrate yeah they're static much like uh, the Royal Scots look into this side of the tender it's pretty much the same as the other side now we come up to the cab it does have detail on the inside don't get me wrong but <laughs> not painted but then again that's to be expected with early 2000s locos. They never had painted cabs, at least as far as I know. <laughs> that's a feature that's come about in the modern day and age. Yeah. Still, it's a nice cab. And plenty of space in there for you to fit a crew in. You see some more nice separately fitted parts along here, like those handrails and these pipes. There's the wheel arches again, even more piping, it's really nice. And now for that top view. Remember what I said about the funnel? Eh, that's what I meant. Yep, that's pretty much what it is. And there is this huge seam at the top. You don't really see that with my Terrier or number 27. But, you know, it's not that bad when it's running. Although, when it's stationary, you do notice it. But you can tell too, there's some safety valves right there, which are metal, they're cold to the touch. And then, I'm guessing that's a whistle. <laughs> it's kind of crude looking. Let me take a look at that thing. Hmm. First time I'm actually looking at it. Hmm. Oh well, it's not that bad, really. It's not that bad at all. All right, I'm just gonna put Lord St. Vincent right there, which is a very nice locomotive. And honestly, if you don't have her in your collection, I definitely recommend picking her up. Because trust me, you won't be disappointed with the results. <laughs> Alright, so there are our three locomotives. Low Boiler 460 number 27 from Bachman Spectrum. The brand new Hornby Terrier, new tool version from the Cantonese Sussex Railway. And the Bachman Branch Lines Lord St. Vincent. All three are very great locomotives, and all three I got at three separate times. Brampton Train Show. Actually, no, that was from George's Trains. That's from the Brampton Train Show, and this came from Hornby. But they're all very nice, very, very nice engines. And if you don't have them in your collection, I definitely recommend picking them up. You won't be disappointed. And that's enough yik yak for me. <laughs> Hopefully this video wasn't going to be too long, but it probably is. <laughs> so, I'm just going to stop rambling now and just wait for another day to film the next part. So, until next time, my friends, I'm Thomas Sawyer 2000. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm signing off.